How's it going boys? Johnny Superb Man here and I want to bring you another Let's Talk NHL video and this time I want to talk about my Toronto Maple Leafs. Halfway through the season I want to give uh, my opinions on the Maple Leafs and what they need to do to become a better team and all that good stuff alright. So I want to get right into this. There'll be some things that you see on the screen like the lineups but for the most part they'll just be shootout footage. I'm just going to be talking here okay. So first we'll start in the back end the goaltender situation. Um, I think if you compare our goaltender situation to last year no doubt we're a better team. Uh, we don't have Reimer and Scribbins this time. Now we got Reiner, uh, Reimer and uh, Jonathan Bernier, who to me has looked really good. Um, there's been points in the seasons where I've honestly thought to myself that he looks like one of the best goalies in the NHL. But then for some reason, there's also been a growing trend with uh, Bernier for him to allow a lot of weak goals, weird ones too, like weird goals that like a, a, a goalie in like Pee Wee should have kind of goals, you know, like saucers or floaters from the uh, neutral zone or dump and chases that bounce off the backboards and goes in. Um, I hope that those are just stupid mistakes, you know, and they're not uh, something that will always happen with Jonathan Bernier. But that is something to keep an eye on. If if those bad goals go go away, like the goals that we saw against the Islanders, right? Like if those goals go away, he's definitely a better goalie than uh, J uh, James Reimer. And I think Randy Carlisle is uh, going that way as well with Jonathan Wait, Bernier. Really, if the season continues and we are a playoff team, I think Dude, Jonathan I Bernier gets to start in game one. But I would not trade away James Reimer this year whatsoever. You got to keep James Reimer just in case uh, Bernier goes down with an injury or if Jonathan Bernier has a few bad games where he allows a lot of weak goals. You got to go back to Jim Reimer then because James has actually been a really good backup for us and if we need him, he needs to be there, right? So we can't trade away our goaltenders. We got to hold on to both of them, all right? But I'd say go with Jonathan Bernier as your starter. Um, next up, we got the defensive core. All right, so few things with the defense. First thing I think we should talk about is Dion Phaneuf. Um, you know, the, the big contract was signed seven years at 49 mil, seven mil a year. Um, so we've we've committed to Dion Phaneuf, you know. You guys can argue that, you know, he's not a top two defenseman. He doesn't deserve that much money. Um, as long as he's the uh, first line defenseman of the Toronto Maple Leafs, they're not going to be a Stanley Cup team. You can say all you want about that, but facts are facts. We've committed to Dion Phaneuf, all right. Um, we're a better team with Dion Phaneuf in our lineup than with out, and that's where it was going, boys. Uh, if you're going to let Dion Phaneuf walk to free agency, another team's going to pay him $7 million a year, right? So um, I'm glad that we signed Dion Phaneuf rather than just losing him for nothing. You know, if we could have traded him and got something back for him, then that's something else, but that wouldn't have happened anymore. Uh, he had all the negotiating rights. He was going to be an unrestricted free agent. He could do what he wants. Um, he's only making $500,000 a year more than what he was making before he signed that deal. Before he was making six and a half. now he's making seven so um, I'm glad that we got Dion Phaneuf but what we need to do on defense is build a better core around Dion Phaneuf right because the way we have it right now is Dion Phaneuf is on our first line and he's playing with Carl Gunnarsson and there's nothing wrong with Gunnarsson I like Gunnarsson I think he should stay on the team but I don't look at Gunnarsson and think top two defensemen and with Dion Phaneuf on the first line, you need to have somebody who really makes him a better player. To me, Dion Phaneuf is not a defenseman who is going to make his team around him like much, much better. He can throw the body, he can log some minutes, he can take uh, time against the other team's best defenseman. But I'm talking about... Um, you know, making plays happen. I think he needs a defenseman alongside of him who is basically a good, a great defenseman all by himself, right? I mean, this is going way, way too far, but like uh, when Shea Weber and uh, Ryan Suter were playing together, right? To me, um, they both helped each other out to become great defensemen. And I think that's what Dion Phaneuf needs in Toronto. He doesn't, obviously, a Shea Weber or Ryan Suter would help out anybody. I'm not saying go that far. But he needs a defenseman who, by himself, is a legitimate top two or uh, very strong top four defenseman. And to me, Carl Gunnarsson is more of a role-playing defenseman, a defensive defenseman to take, uh, you know, to kill off some penalties, to log some minutes, but not to be, you know, a first liner who is supposed to log like 25, 30 minutes a game. So if we've committed to Phaneuf, I think we need to commit to find a better right defenseman for Phaneuf, and that could be Riley, it could be Gardner, but certainly not this year, okay? So that's where we're a little bit weak on defense, that first line with Phaneuf. Gunnarsson is more of a top six, top four defenseman, in my opinion. Uh, next on defense, you know, Gardner and Riley, this year, they're clearly still young, and they're obviously going to make mistakes, you know? Um, 
Are they good enough to be on a Stanley Cup winning team? No. But do you trade them because one day they might be good enough, right? So that's the uh, that's the issue there with defense. Personally, I'd rather hold on to Gardner and Riley and trade away a guy like Cody Franzen because if you look at Phaneuf, Gardner, Riley, and Franzen, to me, they're all offensive type defensemen. Dion Phaneuf, you know, he's an offensive defenseman. He he's at his best when he's you know going up and down the ice, taking shots, throwing that body. All right, he's he's good when he's um, trying to make something happen. But to me, Gardner. Riley fall into that category, and so does Cody Franzen. The only thing I like about Cody Franzen is that the fact that he's right-handed. But uh, to me, you need to replace Cody Franzen with more of a defensive defenseman um, who would be better than Carl Gunnarsson, right? Then you could have a nice top four. But um, to me right now, with Phaneuf, Gardner, Riley, Franzen, and Gunnarsson, you know, that's just, it's just not good enough in those five defensemen. So I think Franzen could be traded. And uh, again, we still need a top two defenseman to play alongside of Dion Phaneuf. Say you had Dion Phaneuf with somebody, uh, you know, I don't know who it is, right? Then that could be your first line. Then you could have like Gardner and Gunnarsson on the second line. And then you could have Morgan Riley and uh, Gleason on the third line. And that would look a little bit better. All right. But it all depends on that defenseman that we bring in. But I don't see that happening. So you got to hold on to Gardner and Riley, wait for them and see if you can move Franzen because he's an unrestricted free agent this year as well. And uh, I don't want to pay him like four, four and a half, five million that he's going to be wanting in the offseason, right? Uh, so there's our defensive core. Again, just sum it up quickly. We need to bring in like a top two defenseman. And that's <laughs> probably not going to happen, all right? Um, offense. All right, so offense. Interesting for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, now... Our first line, Kessel, Bozak, and JVR are clearly our first line. Um, the only problem with that is, is that they are a rush line. All right, they're an offensive line. They're not the greatest defensively. Bozak brings that line a, a little bit more respect when it comes to defense because he can win faceoffs. Uh, he stays back and allows uh, JVR and Kessel to do what they got to do. But um, you know, Kessel. It's always been said he's not the greatest defensive player. He's got better. He's got a little bit better with his back check. But just naturally, uh, Kessel and JVR, they try things that are going to hurt your team. They'll try passes through the middle, uh, rush offense, rush offense. They'll just be waiting up the ice on the boards, not helping out uh, on the defensive side of things, right? And that will naturally hurt your team. Now, I don't have a problem with having a rush line as your first line. But to me, our second line is the line that really hurts the Toronto Maple Leafs, all right? Our second line right now is absolutely in shambles because, the second line left wing, Joffrey Lupul. I think Joffrey Lupul is great. I would love if Joffrey Lupul was a little bit younger and I would put him up on the first line with Bozak and Kessel and then maybe even trade JVR because to me, JVR, again, is that rush offense. But if Lupul wasn't injury prone, he was a little bit younger, I would rather have Lupul than JVR. Just the way Lupul plays. Um, he's definitely He can definitely get points, but because he's on the second line, he's not on the power play as much. All right, They tried it with him at center, but uh, when Bozak came back, you got to have Bozak on the first line center position because of his faceoffs. So Lupo loses that first line power play time and that first line time. So he's put down to the second line. But that's the problem because jo Joffrey Lupo to me is more of a rush type player as well. So now you've got a first line rush line with JVR, Bozak, and Kessel. And your second line is now Joffrey Lupo, Nazem Kadri, who is also a rush type skill type guy, right? And then the right winger is, it's supposed to be David Clarkson. I mean, I know there's going to be people out there who say David Clarkson has been a bust. Uh, he's not good. Facts are facts, guys. We've signed him to seven years. So we, we got to try and make it so he's not a bust. And I think the reason that he's a bust is because he's not a rush type player player. He's a offensive zone gritty type of player, right? a shooter, a, a go to the front of the net and tip it in or um, get in their face type player, right? And for him to uh, succeed, you need to have a rush type line. I mean, not a rush type line, a, uh, a chip and chase grindy type line alongside of him. But when, you know, he's getting paid like a second liner, which means he has to be playing on the second or first line. You can't put him on the third line because that's just a waste of David Clarkson. Then it's a big mistake. You got to put him on the second line. And to do that, to me, you can't have Kadri and I mean maybe Lupul and Clarkson can get it going but then you'd really need to replace that second line center and that to me is why our second line is in shambles it's it's a mixture between you have a rush guy on the left you have a gritty guy on the right and then you have a center who is still the same kind of thing as uh, Gardner and Morgan Riley he'll be good in a few years but is he good enough to produce right now as a second line center no I look at Nazem Kadri I see a, a third line winger or a third line center maybe all right but uh, Nazem Kadri right now is not ready to be a second line center on a supposed supposed deep playoff team, right? He could be our second line center and we can maybe barely make the playoffs, get kicked out in the first round. Yeah, that'll work. 
But if I'm building this team to be a Stanley Cup contender, Kadri does not belong on the top six. He's a third liner at best, right? So if you're building the third line then, uh, David Boland, he's a big question mark because... You know, the thing about Boland was injury prone. He's coming into our team and he has been injury prone in the past. He gets a big injury this year. Um, I don't know if he's going to be good when he comes back. I don't know if he's going to be injured when he comes back again, right? So I'd love to see Boland on that second line with Luplu and Clarkson. I think that could be a, that could be a pretty good line, but uh, you just don't know with Boland, right? So the second line center position is a... Um, it's a big question mark. The third line, I think, would look good with Boland as the center if he came back and he was uh, uh, healthy, right? He would definitely fit into that center position. And then maybe Kadri on the wing. But uh, I don't like Mason Raymond and Nikolai Kuhleman on the third line. And I'll tell you why. It's because they're more rush players. Again, um, Randy Carlisle, uh, he wants to turn this team into a chip-and-chase, playoff-bound team. And you can't have rush-type players on every single line. Uh, we've been going with Joffrey Lupo, Kadri, and Raymond on the second line. But to me, Clarkson is the second liner. We've committed seven years. How much money? we got to get him going on the second line. So that falls Raymond into the third line with uh, Kadri, Kuhleman, Boland, and Raymond. Those are basically our third liners right there, right? To me, Kuhleman's not bad. I think he does bring some, of a, uh, some grittiness to him, but... Um, you know, he's kind of just a floater there for me. Um, Mason Raymond, I know he's been getting some points, but he's the same thing. He's a rush type player who makes plenty of mistakes trying to get that offense. Yeah, he'll get a he'll get some goals, he'll get some points, but he'll also have some turnovers. And to me, if our first line is a rush line, then everything else has to be good defensively. And it doesn't happen for me on the third line with Kadri, Raymond, and Kuhleman, right? You need you need to bring in some players for that third line. And our fourth line, McLaren, McClements, and Orr, I think it's a fine fourth line. You get your tough guys. You even have your AHL players like D'Amigo and uh, Trevor Smith that you can um, bring in, bring out. Depends on the team that you're facing, right? McClement to me, is the perfect fourth line center. Um, I, was, I wanted him to be like a, a nice third line center, but to me, he's more of a fourth liner who goes out there for all defensive zone face-offs and penalty kills, and he'll get his minutes that way, you know? He's not like a fourth liner who barely gets any time like McLaren or Orr. He will get his time, but it's special teams time. It's face-off time. It's fourth line time, right? He doesn't bring enough offense to be on the third line effectively. So I think McClement, McLaren and Orr and uh, Trevor Smith and Domingo are perfect fourth liners. I wouldn't touch our fourth line. Um, but again... If you take a look at the uh, the screen right now, I'll just kind of put uh, the lineups for you, right? Um, the forward core. Again, Bozak, Kessel, they're fine as they the first liners, but JVR and uh, or Lupul there. You know, you got to choose one of them. Who do you want as your first line left winger? And if you're going to go with JVR, that's fine, but he's got to show up a little bit more because when he's good, he looks good, but for that big body, he goes silent way too much, and again, he brings that rush-style offense. If you're going to keep JVR, that, that moves down Lupul to the second line, right? And if you have Lupul on the left, Clarkson on the right, who is that center that can bring those guys together and turn that line into a, a very good second line, right? I, I don't know who that center is. I don't feel like we have it on our team. Kadri doesn't belong there. Boland, if he's back and healthy, maybe he belongs there. But to me, you need a top-of-the-line, second-line center who can win face-offs, kill penalties, and uh, chip and chase and be like a uh, an offensive zone uh, cycle-type uh, center. If you do that, then you bring that second line together. You have a rush first line and a uh, chip and chase second line then the third line you can have Kadri in there Boland in there and then I'd like to see somebody else than Raymond or Kuhleman their rush style offense I'd like to see a bigger body who again chips and chase turn that third line into a chip and chase with a little bit of skill with Kadri there so he can uh, do what he did last year on the third line you know uh, the other teams are worried about our first two lines then Kadri goes out there and just uses his skill to get a goal or two that's what Kadri can do for us on the third line and the fourth line and then the defensive core again Funuf and Gunnarsson. Gunnarsson to me should be moved down. All right. Franzen could be traded, and we need to get somebody in there to play alongside of Funuf. And then you have Gardner with Gunnarsson and Riley with Gleason, and I think that's good enough. Is that a Stanley Cup winning team? No. But uh, I think that's what we need to change to improve our team, all right? Just too much ru rush and too much turnovers in the neutral zone and too much inexperience on the defensive core, all right? So, I mean, we have some trading assets, but uh, I don't think that it's a possibility to turn this team into a Stanley Cup contender for this year. We can be 
a playoff team and we can make, you know, anything can happen in the playoffs, but to be a legitimate Stanley Cup contender, I don't think that that can happen this year. What we need is we need Kadri to turn into a second line center. We need Clarkson to uh, work himself out and we really need Gardner and Riley to progress into like top two, top four defensemen. That's what we need. All right. So I'm thinking that the best Leaf team is probably two, three years away. All right. Because all these players will still be here for another two, three years, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. That second line center position to me is the big one right there. All right. So I don't know. There's my opinion on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Let me know what you guys think about them as well. But uh, hopefully we make the playoffs, right? And once we're in the playoffs, anything can happen. But we got to start to win some games for sure because a lot of teams in the Eastern Conference, it's wide open. We got to make sure that we get these wins nice and early. All right, boys. So there you go. There's my opinions about the Toronto Maple Leafs. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys in the next video.